Hey guys, it's uh, 3 a.m. This is uh, Chief T. My wife was awoken middle of the night by the screams. So apparently it looks like uh, this guy either, is either coming up, coming off uh, some heavy drugs. So at a moment's notice, I gotta be able to run. I don't know if I could outrun this guy, probably. But right now, I am not getting any closer than this. Fuck yeah. Oh. So I'm going to hang tight here for a little bit. I have to kind of watch my back because I know there's other street people that are on the street. And I just saw one come up, roll up right behind me. And so I got to kind of watch two fronts, the front and then also to the sides and the back. So anyways, it looks like he's taking off, so I'm going to go over this way and uh, kind of view him from afar. Here's a police officer, so we'll see what happens. I'll just keep rolling here for you guys. You never know what's happening when uh, police roll up on the scene like this. It looks like they run into this stuff a lot and they know what to do in the situation a lot better than I do. So periodically you'll get these uh, people in my area that are just really going off the chain with uh, drug use. This particular guy uh, may be someone that periodically comes into our area when he gets out of jail. So I, I believe I had problems with him in the past where he was approaching you know, me in a threatening manner and uh, I had to call the cops. So I'm not sure who he is. That's the that's the danger is really not knowing who these people are that are flipping out right by your house here in the city, Southern California. I personally come over here, check things out, and uh, try to ascertain what, what it was. It could have been a woman screaming for help. I mean, I don't know, maybe she could have been raped, someone getting killed. Um, you know, I, I don't stay locked into my house like probably most people. I go out and do a little bit of investigative journalism bring my camera along and uh, try to maintain a safe distance but uh, I believe in perimeter security of your home where you actually kind of keep a 50 100 yard perimeter uh, watch around your area to see what's going on what's happening uh, rather than kind of hunker down in your house and just call police so uh, different strokes for different folks um, you know both have their advantages and disadvantages I like the ability to be able to influence um, what's happening on the outside before it can get to the inside. Other people um, feel that it's dangerous, that uh, they'd rather just kind of lock their doors and stay inside. So it's just your comfort level of what you're comfortable with. But uh, this is another way of adding some perimeter security uh, to your house is just being aware of what's going on outside, who are the, these people. Uh, being aware of different individuals, you know, is there someone suspicious in the area? Can you keep an eye out on them? Uh, but you just don't want to get into a situation where you're, uh, you know, getting a situation like Zimmerman or Trevor Martin, Trevor Martin, where you're approaching someone that is a suspicious character, and then they end up being able to cost you and, uh, you know, jump you. I think that was a situation where he was not uh, using proper self-awareness, street level intelligence you always want to keep a healthy distance from the perpetrator and you don't want to give them an opportunity to hide in the bushes and jump on top of you because you know literally 
uh, you're in a life and death situation when you're in a situation where they can get a hold of you because all it takes is a knife or a screwdriver or something like that and you can bleed out pretty easily so this is g for t i'm not coming out here with any weapons at all so all i have is my mind my ability to be self-aware so um, that's my tips for you know being on the street investigating stuff on the street at night um with a potential um you know people that could be dangerous anyways guys god bless peace out take care